Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel and today we are going to be looking at Slab Reinforcement Plan. This has been one of the long lasting requests from subscribers on the channel so I thought it's about time to get it done. So if you've never seen a Slab Reinforcement Plan and what that um, might look like, here is an example that I did some time ago. Um, this is a two-story building and this slab that you're looking at would be the slab between level one and level two. And I know what you're saying, especially if you've never seen one of these before. Uh, it looks very complex, a bunch of lines, what does this mean? But don't worry, at the end of this video I don't want to promise but I'm sure you'll have a better understanding of uh, how to read a slab reinforcement plan and thereby be able to reproduce it because I think once you understand what you're looking at you would be able to draw it all right and after all it's not that difficult but it's time consuming but you know what let me stop talk let's <laughs> let's get into it So if it's your first time on the channel, thank you all for joining and do me a favor, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also drop a subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet. What are you waiting on? Respect. Now, before we get into the actual drawing of the slab reinforcement plan, I think there are a couple of things we need to understand about concrete itself. Now, of course, I won't be able to cover everything about concrete, but these are just the basic things that I think you need to know in order to effectively and properly produce a slab reinforcement plan. So the first thing would be concrete performs best in compression. So that's another way of saying concrete loves when you squeeze her. However, if you try to stretch concrete, that is when it, it is most likely to break down. So concrete performs best in compression. On the other hand, steel performs best under tension rather than compression. And so because of these opposing uh, forces or what, what, what should I say? These opposing positions, combining the two material makes perfect sense. All right. That is why you always see concrete and steel together. If you take a look at this diagram here, uh, you will see a slab of concrete on top of Two supporting members and it has no steel inside of it okay and so what happened when you start to apply load on top of this concrete slab you will find that it start to bend in the middle and when it starts to bend you will have more tension or stretching at the bottom or the base of the concrete slab and that is why it start to break apart because concrete is not good in tension it doesn't like when you stretch it. Now, what do you do to mitigate against that? You put steel at the base of the concrete slab. And that is what you're seeing in this diagram here. So steel loves when you stretch it. It performs better under tension. So you put it in a position that allows it to exercise that property. So that out of the way, let's jump over into some more exciting stuff. So as you can see here, I have a Google sketch up model and I'm sure by now you can tell what this is. Um, this is simply a bus shed is what we call it in Jamaica. Um, in other parts of the world, you might call it bus stop or something else. But typically it's one of those places where people would gather to wait on public transportation. And so I thought this would be simple enough to uh, demonstrate today's lesson all right it has a pretty simple rectangular slab on top of it so let's kind of focus in on that a little bit more typically a slab would be supported by what we call beams and so these are what beams would look like underneath a slab and of course we can have beams running in the middle and in between which we will see a little bit more of later on in this video but also beams are being supported by columns just like that and of course the columns are being supported supported by foundation and the foundation is supported by the earth and so this is pretty much the basic framework of a structure um 90 percent of the times if not a hundred um so um some sort of beam some sort of column some sort of 
slab or roofing material so when we take a look at this slab here and of course this slab would be reinforced what would the steel work look like inside of this and so what i'm going to do is to turn off the concrete off of this just like that and so we can now see what that typically looks like and of course this is not perfect but it should give you a better understanding of what's happening here and i'm sure you would have seen something like this um somewhere on a construction site and so what are we looking at here how do you understand what we're looking at here and i'm going to attempt to break that down for you today so what i'm going to do is to go ahead and turn off some additional layers so let's turn all right so what i did here was to leave two steel on here um one representation of each type of steel okay so running in the shorter distance we have what is called the main bar and running in the longer distance we have what is called the distribution bar so the main bar shorter distance the distribution bar runs the longer distance keep that somewhere in your brain now another thing you need to notice is that the main bar is at the bottom while the distribution bar is at the top and what happened is that we would lay out like this a bunch of main bars at equal distance apart and so this is what it would look like and of course they would all be um, at the bottom and then on top of those we would lay out a bunch of distribution bars and so we end up with a grid looking pattern like that uh, then they would of course use binding wire to tie each intersection all right so there you have it we have the main bar and the distribution bar but there's an additional bar or rebar that we typically use on a slab and that would be the over support bar which looks something like this so here i turn on a few of them and as you can see here it basically runs at the top here and it doesn't go all the way it just goes quarter the distance okay and so whatever the distance is from here to here you would pretty much divide that by four and that would be the distance or the length of that steel right there likewise for uh, the one in this direction okay so when you turn all of that on this is what you have and this is what they would do on a typical construction site to get it all um, set up and ready to be poured and all of that so with all of that said let's go over to autocad where i think i would be better able to give some explanation here so this is what the slab plan looks like and of course i will drop the pdf down below so you can check that in the description and download it so you can have it so what i'm going to do here is to turn off a couple of layers so that you can see a little bit more clearer all right so that's good enough right there and so what you're seeing here is exactly what i just explained all right this is the plan view of the bus shed and what we have here is the shape of the slab okay and underneath that we have the wall not the wall the beam underneath okay so you can see the beam uh where the beams are located underneath that slab we do have a little cantilever here as we saw on the the slab itself over here so that's what that is and yeah so that's the basic of the, the plan itself and then we have one representation of each type of steel on this drawing so i have the distribution bar one representation of that i have the main bar one representation of that and then i also have one of over support bars on all four sides okay so that is basically what you need to do so if you have multiple rooms what you would do is to do the same thing for every room and just make sure that you have the distribution bar running the longer span while the main bar is running the shorter span and of course get your four uh over support bars inside of it that's all you need and you're on your way all we need to do is to add the dimensions and the dimensions is really what crowd up the drawing <laughs> so to speak so if i were to turn that layer back on but it's pretty simple it's basically um let's say let's take for instance the distribution bar and it has a circle on it which i just use the circle tool to draw that circle and 
this circle is telling me that this dimension is in reference to this distribution bar. Okay, and so if I should look at this dimension here, it is telling me that from this point all the way down to this point, we are going to be having this information. This is a number four steel distribution bar at eight inches CRS. Okay, CRS is just like, you know, center to center. So that's what this is saying. A number four bar, this is talking about the size of the steel. So if you're, if you're not familiar with this, you need to get yourself familiar with it. Um, there's actually a place here in AutoCAD where we can go to view these different uh, sizes. So go to your detail components and go up to concrete, go down to reinforcement. And underneath here, we can see the different numbers and the, uh, the, the, the sizes that they represent. So in this project, we would be using a number three and a number four. These are in inches. So we are saying here, this green distribution bar is a number four size distribution bar at eight inches apart, okay? So when we lay them out, it's gonna be eight inches apart. And the main bar, this is the dimension that is in relation to it, is pretty much the same thing. It's a number four main bar at eight inches apart, okay? And basically that's all we do. For the, for the uh, over support bars, it's the same thing, all right? Except that we're using a number three OSB, which is the shortening for over support bar at 12 inches apart. And you would add the similar dimensions to all of your over support bars, okay? And after that, all we would do is to add some additional dimensions like how long each over support bars are, and also some overall dimensions just so that the, uh, the, the, the contractor can have some additional information to work with. And then of course we would need, and I use the term need to provide sectional views. So as you can see here, I have one cutting in opposite directions. That's critical. So here I have the first section, which is cutting the shortest distance. And we know that along the shorter distance, the main bar would be at the bottom. So as you can see there, we have the main bar at the bottom, while the distribution bars are represented as a dot at the top. And you would label them accordingly, just like we did on the plan view. And we would also label the over support bars, just like we did on the plan view. Okay. Now, if you notice, I, I didn't put any beam or wall detail here because normally I would have those on a separate drawing. So, you know, I you don't have to show them here if you don't want to um, usually what i would do is to just label these as uh, let's say this was a type one beam or a type two beam type one wall or type two wall that kind of stuff and then if we go over here this is the other section cutting um, in the long direction so we can see where the distribution bar is spanning all the way across while the main bars at the bottom is now represented as a dot all right so it's like a flip scenario here where um, you can see the long one at the top here while over here it's more on the, the flip end or the flip side all right and again we label them accordingly to what we have here main bar distribution bar such and so forth over support bars likewise all right and then of course you would throw some dimensions on there like you see i have here from the edge of slab to the edge of uh, steel likewise on that side and we would show these dimensions here edge of slab to wall and so on and so forth all right so these are pretty much a very simple design of how we would go about producing a slab reinforcement plan all right so what would happen if we had multiple rooms like what we're seeing here um this is pretty much the floor plan of the one bedroom house that we did except that now i have a slab plan or a slab on top so what would this look like so if you want to see how this is done and how I go about uh, producing a slab reinforcement plan for this one bedroom house, line by line, step by step, I will place part two of this video right here or the first link in the description. So definitely go and check that out. Thank you guys for watching. And if you haven't subscribed as yet, definitely remember to hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the like button because you know that helps with the YouTube 
algorithm. Big up to all the patrons over on my Patreon page. The link for that page is also in the description below. So go and check that out. And uh, yeah, see you on the other side of this video. See me outside. Mm -hmm. mm.